Stompin' Tom Connors learned this country's roads and rails like the lines in his palms, hitching rides and hopping freight cars with a guitar on his back, playing for his next meal. This country inspired his music. And that means Connors is the kind of music legend that could be found only in Canada. And today, Canadians said farewell at a memorial service in Peterborough, Ontario. The CBC's Deanna Sumanak was there. They drove for hours, waited in the cold, to say farewell to the man who told their stories in his songs. He did his stuff his own way, and he, it never changed. He was Canadian. <laughs> yeah, the Canadian music, the music, the toe tapping music. Strangely enough, Stompin' Tom Connors organized this memorial during his life. He wanted it held at a place that could seat as many of his fans as possible. True to his everyman style, the chosen venue was a hockey arena. Inside, thousands of fans who felt they knew Stompin' Tom listened to the songs and stories of those who did know him. I first met Tom in a hockey rink. Star goalie and former Liberal MP Ken Dryden was first a fan, then a friend of the man who brought us the hockey song. Basic, straightforward, proud, emotional, um, and um, unconquerably Canadian. And, and he was totally um, unembarrassed by that. He was a gift to us as Canadians. Former Governor General Adrian Clarkson was also a friend. Well, you know, Stomp and Tom loved me. The two were so close, Stomp and Tom was allowed to smoke inside Rideau Hall. Farewell to Nova Scotia, the sea-bound coast. Let His other friends included some of Canada's top musicians, from folk great Sylvia Tyson. Here's a song about a man, I think you all know, he plays a Canadian country music show. To the country musician Tim Huss, who Stomp and Tom called his musical successor. He's, a, he's definitely one of a kind, you know, but he's got real strong principles about, uh, about what, he was, what he was trying to do and about trying to kind of bring the whole country together, and he took that very, very seriously. He was a very, very proud Canadian. For one of Stompin' Tom's real successors, it's the fan turnout that means the most. Tom Connors Jr. rarely speaks to the media. So they're paying him back a little bit to say, hey, Stompin' Tom, you, uh, you sang about us, well, we're going to be here for you at the end, right till the end, and they'll be fans forever. Uh, so it makes me feel good, warm in my heart, that the old man did something right. Judging by the celebration of his life, part country hoedown, part funeral of a dignitary, Stompin' Tom did plenty right. Deanna Sumanak, CBC News, Peterborough, Ontario. It wasn't just Connor's music that touched countless Canadians, he also changed lives. Three Canadians told us their Stompin' Tom stories. A young musician moved by his death to write a tribute. A man who, thanks to Connors, was able to save a Canadian landmark. And the man who gave a stranger a chance and witnessed the birth of a legend. Okay. Well, I'm long gone to the Yukon. The Yukon keeps calling for me. I'll never forget him. I'm long, long gone to the Yukon. 1964. Cold October night. <laughs> Rain, half snow. And I'm barman at the hotel. It's very quiet. There's just a few people. It's almost 11. When this stranger walked in, all soaking wet, hungry looking. And the moon like a boat began to float upon the starry ocean. And he's polite, and humble. This guy, something about him. Honesty or something. Like, wow, too much, you know. His eyes. And I can't let him go much. Like. Canada became a family. His fans is a family he never had. And that's why he wrote about them. We save a lot of money spending money we don't get. It's hard to believe a little guy like that from PEI with 30 cents in his pocket can do all this with a heart and soul. Yeah, you go, keeps calling for me. He my, he my, oh, the best man in Ottawa, the lover of Joe. 
while he was here, he started to write the song Big Joe Muffra. Hey, my bro, the best man in all was a Muffra too. Well, two years later, Big Joe Muffra was on every country station. And there was talk about selling the hotel to a gas company, an oil company, and their plan was to demolish it. So I wrote a letter off to the record company. But a month or so later, I got a letter from them. We must save the grand old lady. Then all of a sudden, everybody in the country wanted to talk to me. You know, the CBC and, and all the media. If it wasn't for Stomp and Tom, we wouldn't be sitting here. It's that simple. And he was a champion of the human spirit. And I think buildings, they're just structures, but I think that Tom, he realizes that life happens here and they are a visual statement of those lives. So long, Stomp and Tom, but at least we've got your songs. Wasn't even really thinking of writing a song uh, for Stomp and Tom. I was just thinking of writing a song. And I just went. So long, stomping Tom, I can't believe you're gone. I mean, it was, it came out just like that and done. It, it is far and away the greatest honor of my, my music career. He, he brought a pride, a sense of Canadian pride, just by singing about these little towns. We've all heard songs about Memphis and the Chattanooga Choo Choo, but you don't hear a lot of songs about Flin Flon. So long, stomping Tom, they got to take care of you.